Hey, good evening YouTube. How y'all doing? Good, good, I hope. Anyhow, so you guys asked for it, so we're going to display it. How about that? Start with, uh, these are all sample glasses obviously. Um, but these are all my uh, home brews. So, let me just clear the chill things out of you. Alright, this one here. This one here is my pumpkin ale. Okay. This one here is an IPA. Notice how notice how clear they are. This is an IPA. That one's a pumpkin ale. This one's my Citra Pale Ale. I'm just clearing the haze off so you guys can get a good view of it. So, there you go. Nice and clear, nice carbonation. Alright. This one here is the Amarillo Pale Ale. So it's a it's basically one hop. So there you have it. They're all crystal clear. This one here is my pineapple pale ale. There's not much left, so as you can see. This one's just a small one because it didn't fill up. There's just a lot of head. So this is my chocolate vanilla stout. So I have six kegs. There's six beers here. So I'll start with the pumpkin ale. Seeing that one is the the out of all of them, this one is the least clear. But again, it's uh, it's been, I haven't uh, uh, drank out of it, so it's uh, a full keg, and it was the first. Uh, glass so let's get a smell mmm nice sweet brown sugar nice biscuit kind of smell there cinnamon clove nutmeg allspice it smells like pumpkin pie so there you have it kind of has the same color as a pumpkin too so, cheers. Take a swig of it. It's nice and sweet, followed by a nice bitterness. As it goes to the back of your throat, there's like a nice burst of citrus, um, not citrus, um, pumpkin um, characteristics and the spices and the brown sugar. Light to medium carbonation. Light to medium body. See the nice lacing? Not much of a head, but um, it's because I have to go to the different kegs and pour them. They're all in one. Well, they're not all in one location. Three are in a fridge in my my beer room. Uh, two are in a kegerator that's in the back room, and then one's outside. The step is outside. So all in all, my personal opinion on the pumpkin ale. It's very well balanced. 
um, well crafted. Um, it's a good uh, balance between your pumpkin pie and your pumpkin beer. Um, you know, you get the pumpkin pie characteristics in this beer, but you also get the uh, pumpkin um, characteristics now. You know, like I say many times, some people like the sweet pumpkin pie in your face type of, gla um, uh, of pumpkin beers. Some like the the all pumpkin beers. This is a mix of of, of the both of them, um, and in my opinion, it's it's well rounded. Um, you know, so cheers. So. The next one on the agenda is, see it's perfectly clear, you can see right through it, see my face? So this one here is my um, Amarillo Ale, which is basically uh, two grains and one hop, the Amarillo hop. And basically, I'm doing a bunch of beers single hopped um, to try and get uh, the most flavors um, of the hop. Like, I want to see what Amarillo hop does, what this hop does, what that hop does. So I'm doing a lot of these beers. Uh, basically, it's just a pale ale recipe with one hop. That way, it gives me all the characteristics that I'm looking for. And yeah, so, anyways, it's a nice, it's like a, you know, not yellow, but not. Uh, it's like a dark golden color. The uh, pumpkin beer was an orange color. So let's give it a smell. Mm, citrus, tropical fruit. Slight bit of like mango peach. Sweet caramel toffee. Cheers. Now, this one is light carbonation, a light mouthfeel. <coughs> Take a swig of this thing right up front to get that nice little bit of sweetness from the malt. As it rolls across the back of your throat, you pick up the nice uh, tropical fruit um, bouquet of the Amarillo hop itself. Sweet caramel toffee malts rolls across your tongue. Pick up those tropical fruits, the citrus, the the, the, the mango, the the, the, the the peach kind of characteristics, and then finishes nice and dry, and you're ready for another drink. Not too bitter, not too sweet. A very uh, sessionable. Um, uh, summer beer. Um, again, it's just a pale ale recipe with one hop addition, or uh, one type of hop added several times throughout the brew. Um, and yeah, and uh, again, you can see the nice lacing on the glass. The head is kind of dead, but if I wiggle it around a bit, I can regenerate the head, no problem. So there you have it. That's my Amarillo Pale Ale. Again, these are just slightly bigger than shot glasses. They're they're about three inches high. <clears throat> the next one that I'll be doing is my a pineapple pale ale. Yeah. This one is the one that everybody makes me want, like that everybody wants me to make them. Um, I have never entered any competitions. Uh, I might eventually, um, but this is the beer that everybody wants when they come over to my house. 
this beer even makes non-beer drinkers want to, to drink beer. My neighbor told me he'd pay for me to make him a keg of this stuff. So, anyways, as you can see, there's a nice, beautiful head. Uh, the lacing is stuck on the glass. It's perfectly clear. You can see right through it. There's no additions. That I didn't put nothing in them. Basically, I just made the beer, um, and uh, all my hops I put in a hop sock. That way, there's less debris in the beer. And basically, I let it uh, ferment for seven days in the primary, and that clears most of the junk out. And then I put it in the secondary, and that clears out some more junk. And then for a few more days, two or three days, I put it in the kegerator. Um, and the kegerator is set for about three degrees, zero to three degrees, and that just clears them right up. So. This one, uh, this is, uh, there's not very much of the pineapple pale ale left. This was made in uh, August, uh, so it's kind of old. Um, the uh, aroma is, is, is gone. Like you, it, it's fainted. It's not gone. It's fainted, uh, but the flavor is still there. So, anyways, cheers to the pineapple pale ale. Again, this is golden yellow. Kind of looks like your standard Pilsner or lager. The color, anyways. So let's give it a smell. Sweet malts, a tropical uh, bouquet, mostly pineapple. A slight bit of your uh, uh, mango, peach, passion fruit. Cheers. Nice and sweet. And the thing about this beer is that the sweetness of the malt, uh, the bitterness of the hops, and the sourness of the fruit all mingle together um, to give it a nice uh, uh, flavor in the mouth. It kind of dries your mouth up up slightly but all the flavors stick there I try and play around with the hops with this one um, the first time I ever made this beer I believe I used citra hops the second time um, I used Falconer's flight hops and the third time which is this one is Nelson Sauvé and um, out of the three hops that I've used so far, my preference is the uh, uh, Falconer Slight. Um, the Nelson Sylvain has like a white crepe kind of characteristic that I'm picking up. Um, and it's like, uh, it kind of gives the beer a slight bit of a, a wine characteristic. Take a swig of this thing. Nice sweet malts up front. As it rolls across the throat of your tongue, you pick up those nice uh, tropical fruits. The pineapple, the mango, the peach. A slight bit of citrus characteristics there. That white grape is there. Um, finishes nice and dry in the back. Very sessionable. Like you can drink this any time of the year. Um, and what little people know is because I don't really. Some people ask, some people don't. The people that ask, I tell them, but this beer, it's so easy drinking that if you have about six glasses of this, you're, you're messed up. Why, you ask? Because it's a 7.5% beer. But it being a 7.5% beer is very, very, very sessionable. So cheers to the pineapple. So before I get to the next three, the Amarillo Pale Ale. This is a 5.5% uh, ABV beer. And the Pumpkin Ale is a 5% beer. So, <clears throat> the next one on the agenda, we'll go with the Stout. Um, it's 
so like I said the stent is black as black can be can't see through it there's a head still there yes it's not as full as the other glasses but like I said the head was that big when I poured it because it's outside so anyways so it's pitch black uh, the head is kind of a um, a coffee mocha uh, look at the head there's some nice lacing there in the glass you can see inside the glass there you go let's give it a smell some cocoa some vanilla some dark chocolate some roasty malts slight bit of coffee nice sweetness and yeah that's about it for the smell um, now this one here is is a chocolate vanilla stout um, and in this one I used cocoa I used vanilla beans and pure vanilla extract um, I, used, I also used a small bit of oats to give it a, a, a smoother mouthfeel and uh, I used some um, dark chocolate cocoa nibs in the secondary. So, cheers. Medium mouthfeel low carbonation that should have a lower carbonation um, so first initial swig this is some nice sweet roasted malts it trickles back across your tongue gets those hints of chocolate vanilla and oats it's the back of your throat it's it's uh, not dry but not wet so in between a nice um, hint of bitter chocolate followed by a nice hint of sweet chocolate at the very back you get like a roasted coffee uh, kind of characteristic there but very faint it's mostly chocolate and vanilla forward and yeah so that's my chocolate and vanilla stout so we've done four of the six beers I have on tap now uh, the next one on the next one I'm going to be uh, uh, sampling for you guys is I'm using my shirt to dry off the condensation so you can get a better look at the beer this one here is a Citra Pale Ale. Um, so again, it kind of has the color of a lager and Pilsner. Um, each one of these beers minus the uh, stout has about three PSI, two to three PSI of CO2. Um, the stout has one and a half. So, like I said, there's the color. Um, there's no head, obviously. It's been sitting for a while, so the head's died down. But let's give it a smell, see what we get. So, this is Citra Pale Ale. Mm, big, big hints of pineapple and a tropical fruit. Some nice pink grapefruit there. Some lemon, some lime. Nice sweetness. Smells like a smells like a tropical punch. Cheers. Light body, medium carbonation, light to medium carbonation. Um, light mouth feel. Take a swig of it. Right up front, it's like a, a citrus explosion in your mouth. 
big hits of the citrus grapefruit, like the pink grapefruit, the lemon, the lime, the pineapples there, and then it faints to the back and it dries out and you're ready for another swing, another session of beer. Um, again, this one's only 5.5% ABV. Um, the stout was, uh, I think I said it was 5.5% ABV. So there's a 5%, a 5.5, a 5.5, a 5.5, a 7.5, a and the other one. Well, I'll tell you what it is when we get there. So. Take a swig of it. Nice. Easy drinking session of beer. Um, again, this is my uh, the, the Amarillo Pale Ale and the Citro Pale Ale are one of they're just one of many uh, different uh, beers I'm making. Um, um, basically, they each have two different types of malt in it, um, and only one type of hop added at different times in the boil, um, just to give me a nice um, idea of what that hop actually has to offer. Um, and so far these two, I like the, the Amarillo and the Citra, I like that hop a lot. Nice characteristics there. But like I said, like, this is homebrew people. Homebrew and it's clear as day. Uh, you know, I didn't add anything to it, I just let it take its time. And that's part of the key. Um, when making homebrew is that um, your first off is you have to have a general idea of what you're doing depending if you're doing all grain, extract, mini mash, whatever it is, whatever you prefer. Either way, whatever you can afford, whatever you have the time to make, works. Me, my preference is I make all grain. Uh, I've only ever made two um, um, it's like I use a bit of grain and um, 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 extract uh, to make it and it's just because I see in the recipe and I want to try it. It was the uh, White House Honey Ale and the White House Honey Pour. Those are the only two beers I've ever made that had uh, the extract syrup in it. All my other beers have been all grain and trust me, <coughs> once you get the the, the, the uh, the feel of making all grain beer it's fantastic uh, you know uh, I'm not saying that the other like I'm not saying extract isn't as good or you know kit beers whatever whatever you can afford whatever you can do whatever you like whatever you have the time to do exactly that's all I care you know it's all about the craft of, of beer brewing and, and all that stuff uh, my preference like I said is all grain um, and generally it takes me I started, a, I did a batch today, um, Saturday, uh, and I started at 1 o'clock in the afternoon and I finished at 5.30, so, you know, 2, 3, 4, 5, four and a half hours it took me um, to make a batch of beer, and that's from getting the grain and the hops together, grinding the grain down, uh, mashing the, the grain in the mash tun, boiling the wort on the stove, to cooling it, to pitching temps. So four and a half hours, um, which is a good brew day. Um, I may be able to shave a half an hour off, depending. But uh, yeah, so um, so basically, back to what I was saying is, it's your choice. Whatever you prefer to make, it's up to you. Uh, like I said, I have uh, no issues with people that make kits or extract or whatever. That's what they like to do. That's what they want to do. Go ahead, do it. it. Makes you happy. The beer tastes good. It's great. Um, so, um, so that's the three types really um, that you can choose from on how you make your beer. Um, but then the second step is once you have a, an idea on how to make the stuff, is basically um, your cleanliness. Your stuff, I don't know how many times I have to say it, but your stuff has to be clean, 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 clean. Sanitized, 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 sanitized. If you follow the steps on cleaning and sanitizing your stuff, you should have no issues with uh, bad batches um, or batches going bad. 
you know, I have a very regiment uh, way of doing my stuff. I uh, use basically a sop. I use uh, hot water and OxyClean to clean everything, um, except for my stainless steel stuff. The stainless steel stuff I use P uh, PSW, I think it's called. It's a brew cleaner, anyways, to clean all the stainless steel stuff. All the other stuff, the fermenters, the plastic ones, the glass ones, the forks, whatever, is all OxyClean. The the, the muslin bags, OxyClean. Um, and then I use Star Sand. That's the that's the sanitizer I use. Um, make sure that there's contact, you know, 30 to 60 seconds on all surfaces. Um, make sure everything's clean. Um, and yeah, so cleanliness is the the key. Um, cleanliness and sanitization is the key to, to making good beers. Um, and thirdly, you have to enjoy to do it. Um, you know. It takes time to make it, but trust me, it's time well worth it. Um, you know, I always have six beers on the go. Um, sometimes it takes me not very long to get through it, sometimes it takes me a long time to get through it. Like I said, the pineapple beer is August. You know, the stout and the pumpkin beer, I just kegged maybe a few weeks ago and haven't touched it like uh, this is the first time I've tried it um, the Citra and the uh, Amarillo they've been there since uh, October maybe and we're in December and the uh, IPA was November so anyways if you guys have any questions on uh, home brewing like I said I did a batch today I did a uh, coconut IPA actually the uh, stone uh, I tried to do a, the stone clone we'll see how that turns out certain hops I didn't have so I had to substitute with other hops we'll see how it turns out um, so uh, yeah uh, did that today and uh, I have uh, a couple more beers that I want to make I want to make a, um, a raspberry jalapeno ale um, and I want to make a Faulkner Flight IPA, and I want to make a Saison. So, and I have to make another batch of my Pineapple Pale Ale. So those are the next four batches I have in planned. Um, you know, I uh, um, I use um, Beersmith to make all my recipes. Uh, And anyways, uh, I'm rambling on here about homebrew, but, you know, I was asked to do a video on it. Um, I'm sampling my homebrews, so I said, well, hell, you know, why not? I'll do all six in one night and get it over with, and then when I have some more, I'll do some more. Um, and then I wanted to talk a little bit about homebrewing, because, as you can see on my YouTube channel, I don't have very many homebrew uh, videos, and part of it is because I don't really have a brew partner. Um, to help me brew um, and I don't have any tripods for my camera so uh, this is the camera I use most of the time right here to do my videos it's a Canon Rebel um, so I don't have a tripod a tri uh, tripod so it's hard for me to uh, use my two hands to show you guys what I'm doing in videotape so you know, and it's not like my wife wants to stand around for four hours and watch me do a video. So um, I'm gonna try and get a, a tripod at some point so I can do some more homebrew videos so you guys can see. I don't really have anything fancy um, equipment-wise. Um, you know, it's it's basically a cooler with a bazooka screen for my mash tun. Um, it's one of those Coleman Extreme coolers. Um, I have a big, big, big stainless steel pot um, that I use to uh, boil my wort. Um, so basically, it's all gravity fed. The mash tun to the boil kettle, and then the boil kettle. Uh, in the summer, I use the burner outside on the back deck, and in the winter, it's too cold, and it takes a long time for the burner even with the, the, the metal around it, it still takes a while for it to uh, 
get up to temp so I use my stove um, I love that stove uh, it's my new stove it's an induction stove and it boils things super fast which is fantastic for homebrew anyways uh, so yeah that's it that's all I have I, I mashed on in a stainless steel pot uh, a few muslin bags uh, you know I have uh, numerous amounts of grains, numerous amounts of hops. Um, I have a f I have about uh, six plastic pail carboys, and I have about six glass uh, uh, carboys that I use. Uh, I have a, I have a fridge uh, that I have three kegs in, and uh, beers that I do my reviews in. They're in the fridge. Um, in the fridge freezer that's where all the hops are in the back storage room I have a little freezer and I could fit four kegs in there uh, when I'm not lagering um, a beer right now I only have two kegs in there because I have a big glass carboy of an Oktoberfest that I made um, so I'll be trying that as soon as I have an empty keg I'll get that carved up and give that a go but it's been in there I think I made it in August and because uh, I wanted to have it for October but I didn't have a keg empty um, for October so it's still in the fridge or the kegerator it's lagering it can, they say the longer it lagers the better it gets so we'll see um, you know I have no guarantees on what it'll look like or taste like so um, basically the fridge I got is uh, you know it was from an old rental unit uh, the freezer I had is uh, my mom's old one um, you know, you got to do whatever it takes, or whatever works for you. Um, you know. Anyways, let's get on to the last beer. This is the uh, my West Coast IPA. It rings in at six and a half percent ABV. So it's a very big, hoppy beer. Um, lots of sea hops and one uh, and, uh, and Simcoe. So you've got Centennial Cascade, uh, Citra, uh, Centennial Cascade, Citra, uh, Chinook, and Simcoe in here. And malt, you got some Turo in here, some Crystal, uh, some Crystal Malt, some uh, Carafoam. And you see there's a little bit of head. So, but it's, again, it's clear, you can see right through it, man. You can see right through it, so. I took a swig so I can take a sniff without getting my nose wet. White grapefruit. A slight bit of orange, tangerine, citrus, lemon, lime. A slight bit of tropical fruit. Sweet caramel toffee. A slight bit of a biscuity kind of smell there. That's about it for smell. Lots of nice fruity aromas. Uh, a slight bit of caramel and biscuit coming off the nose. Cheers. Take a swig of it. A very, very faint bit of sweetness up front. And boom, get right into the hops. You got your white grapefruit, your pink grapefruit, your lemon, your lime, your orange, your tangerine. A slight bit of pine. Um, you know, after you get through those big fruity flavors, you get a little bit of caramel and toffee in there. Finishes at the back nice and dry, and you're ready for another swig. Look at the lacing. All grain homebrew, folks. All grain homebrew. So, that's another sessionable beer. Um, it's very odd that I make um, 
non-sessional beers just because like when people come over and stuff not everybody uh, wants to drink big heavy beers all the time um, you know the odd time I do have them on hand and they get drank at a very slow pace but you know that's just how it is it's one of those beers that you can savor and it, they last a long time too right because they're high ABV nice and thick so you know they last a while so there you go folks uh, six of my home brews as requested by uh, some of my fellow uh, viewers um, I know the video is a little long I'm sorry about that but uh, you know it gave you a little uh, peek into the into the world of brew by me you know I'm not only about uh, you know beer mails and beer trades and uh, um, reviewing beer I also do home brew some of you may know some of you may not know um, now you do know um, you know and like I said uh, you don't see me do many uh, I slowed down on a lot of the reviews because, like I said, I have all this wonderful home beer to drink, you know, and uh, uh, I don't really, you know, I have three kids, so it's uh, I'm a busy person, and uh, I prefer my home brews over most beers. So, anyways, um, I hope you guys, my viewers, enjoyed the video. I hope you. Uh, it was uh, a, a little bit of informative for you. Um, like I said, I'm gonna try, try, try. Can't guarantee anything, but to do some homebrew videos so you guys actually know that I'm actually making my own beer. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll be back with some more beer reviews. I have tons, tons, tons to do. So. Um, we're going to play a little game before I go, and it's going to be six cheers for you. Cheers. Pumpkin ale down the hatch. West Coast IPA. Cheers. Down the hatch. Lacey. Amarello, pale ale. Cheers, down the hatch. Pineapple, pale ale. Cheers, down the hatch. Chocolate, vanilla stout. Cheers, down the hatch. And last but not least, Citra Pale Ale. Cheers, down the hatch. Six beers, all homebrew. All empty. Cheers. Bye-bye.